say that word. So last night, Wednesday night, I am watching the vape team, uh, which is uh, Dimitri, us, I love my fellow vapers, you know who I'm talking about. Um, Jamie, CJ, and Amanda. But they have some guests on talking about rebuildable atomizers. So they're talking about specifically Genesis style rebuildable atomizers where you have the mesh wick, you know, the stainless steel. So as soon as they start talking, I thought, I get it. I gotta put my two cents worth in because I know there's other people. Ah, I need a haircut. Uh, I know there's other people in the room that are just saying to themselves, I'm, "I I can't do that," and they're making it sound like it's, you know, it's simple. And I mean, I I've been trying for months to actually rebuild one properly. They're great when you buy them and they're already built. Awesome. Uh, which is kind of a kick in the head because you know how good they can be if you only could do it. So I called in and I said, you know, I'm just, I'm just a tard when it comes to um, the rebuildables. I short them out every time, right at the top, burns it out. Can you wait? Seriously? Um, it's at the top post burn out every time. Go lay down. Go. Kids and animals. Don't work with this. So what was I saying? Okay. So the top post, I would always burn it out. I would always have hot spots. And it would take me three or four times wrapping the wire around the stupid mesh before I could get it where I could fire it and it wouldn't snap the wire at the top. So I'm, so you know, I tell them, and so they sort of go on and give me suggestions on what it could be. The one first thing that snapped into my snapped at attention when I heard was Dimitri said that when I'm pulling the top wire, when I'm securing it to the the center post, I'm pulling the mesh wick close to and could be hitting the center post. Okay, how do I stop that? Um, somebody else said that maybe I'm making, I'm tightening the wire too much around the mesh. Another good suggestion. And maybe it's actually, touch, the mesh is actually touching the bottom. So I let them go and continue on, and they were going on and on and on and giving suggestions and everything, and I couldn't wait. <laughs> I'm going to try this. Uh, somebody suggested, um, there was one guy that suggested um, a certain kind of preparation for the wick. So I tried. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I did during the show, and... It didn't take me that long because I was actually, by the end of the show, able to call in and tell them, I did it. So, this is a long video, but it had to be done. So I have to show you that I actually rebuilt this. Um, during the show, I uh, actually rebuilt it. I can't believe it. Okay. There. that. That's how you want it. Spitting and sputtering and just plumes of smoke coming out of it. Or vapor. Um, I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to have to pull this apart so I can show you how I did it. But I'm going to just pull the wick out. It's that, this, that little action is the whole secret of the endeavor. So you can see if I can get my finger on the button here. That'll happen. <laughs> but look at the glowing. They're all glowing. 
And this is ribbon wire, actually. But how cool. Ah. Now, they're all even. They're all... Look down that. No wrap is tighter than the other one. That's the secret. The secret. If you can pull your wick out and everything stays nice and look at that. That's almost professional. You'd think somebody, I had a ringer. I did not. I did that myself. But I'm going to dump out this juice and I will, I hate to, oh, I wish I had another one, but I hate to pull that apart since it's working so well. But I need to show you how, how I did it. So, got it all cleaned up and ready to go. So, a couple of things that were mentioned on the show clicked with me. One being, uh, maybe my mesh was bending. Ah, of course. I got arthritis in all of my thumbs. So maybe my mesh was, when I was um, tightening the top, it was bending. It was bending it and touching the post. Maybe. Or maybe when I was tightening the bolts that I was squishing or tightening the wire too tight on the mesh itself. Two things that could have been happening. So I am I have man hands as you can see and I have uh, trouble with this thumb grabbing stuff. So I'm thinking what's the easiest way? So one of one of the guys, I can't remember, I think it was JC maybe, um, mentioned there was a guy that would had a video out that he wound his wire around uh, around a drill bit. Of course, then you'd have to you had to find the drill bit that was the same basic circumference of or diameter, whatever the hell the word is, of your hole that your your wick was going down into. Well, I don't have a drill. So I don't have drill bits, and I was impatient. I when I when I want to try something, I want to try something. So as luck would have it, I was looking for something to wrap the the wire around, and I saw this, which is a Q-tip stick. <laughs> Pulled the ends off, and look at that, it fits. So that is what I'm going to wrap my wire around. So let me show you. Um, I actually wanted to try out my ribbon wire because I, I won some on CBCN and I turned around and bought a kit that they have at uh, East Side Vapes here in Canada. He put together um, a kit of ribbon wire, nichrome wire, canthral wire, two two sizes of mesh, two sheets of, of uh, 400 and 325 I think it is, and some uh, silica wick. So it's sort of a little kit so you can try a little bit of everything. And it was only 10 bucks. So I got my ribbon wire. It's stiff but it's pliable. Piece of and take it. Take it and we'll wrap it. Not too tight, but you know. That's enough, I should, should think.
pretty damn good. And the, uh, the ribbon wire seems to be a little easier to work with. I thought it would be the opposite. But okay, there you go. So, leaving it on the little stick, I am going to pop this right into the hole. Down to the bottom. There you go. Now I get something to work with. So what I want to do is I want to get this on the post just under it. I don't want to pull it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Where is my screwdriver? There it is. And we're back. So I like using this base, which is my meter. Um, makes it, it's not too heavy. It can actually work. So where's the end of my wire? So I'm going to put it underneath there. See what I mean? Not too tight. You don't need it crazy tight. Alright. I can't even tell. So, so far so good. Let's see, I get. this nut thing. God, I really wish there was a. crank it because that's going to make this really tight. Going to tighten up your. Right. But it does grab it. But you just need to grab it. You're not, you know, it's not a safety wire, so it doesn't have to be cranked down. There. So there it is. You can see. So for shits and giggles, let's see what kind of homage I got going on there. That is cool. That's the first time I ever got two. Right. It's usually an extreme. It's usually 0.6 or 5 or some crazy thing. <laughs> so now I got myself a little happy medium thing going on here. So I'm just going to... just going to... Okay, never mind. So, there we got it going. Now, now you can pull your stick up or set it aside for a second. You're going to do your, your mesh. Um, I find it easy because I have big hands and my thumb doesn't really work that well. I'm going to fold over one one edge. I've tried rolling this on like a paper clip or whatever, but I just can't. Uh, I'm just not flexible enough. So I give it a little fold, like so, and then it just seems to make it easier to roll. This is way too long, but I like it long when I'm rolling it. Just because I have 
more to work with than I managed. It doesn't have to be very tight to begin with. It's just once you have it rolled, obviously that's too thick. But then you just roll it in your fingers. It sort of works itself out. Now you don't want to roll it too tight because you want it to go. You want it to go. I'm just gonna pull this out. You want it to go in easily, but not too easily. You don't want to be able to just drop it in and have it move really loose. So you just sort of keep an eye on it as you're going. You want it to have a little bit of resistance when it's going in. And that is Put it down right to the bottom and then pull it up just a little bit. You don't want it touching the bottom because it's stainless steel on the bottom. Can you see that? Anyway, it's not touching the bottom. So now I can trim the top. Also get burned. Making sure that actually the hole is down the center. The center. Nice. Okay. Now you'll you'll notice I didn't oxidize it before I started rolling it. Um, actually, the first one I did because this is a redo because I had some sort of buzzing. There. Um, first one I did, I didn't oxidize at all, and I had a few problems. So, this is just a lighter. This is enough. And I'm just going to oxidize just a little. It's just a regular lighter. Just to scorch it. Because your wire is going to do that too. I'm just tell my fingers get hot. <laughs> no overkill here. Just to give a little charcoal look. All right. So just a little bit. No craziness. Put it back. Put it in here. Yeah. There it is. Looks good. Now I'm going to pop this on this device. This one. I'm going to put the arms down, the voltage down.
nice and glowy. I'm gonna put a little uh, juice in this sucker and show you our babes. I will tell you I like this. Uh, um, I'm more of a VG juice. Um, I find PG juices are just um, too harsh on them. I don't know because probably because they burn so bright. I'm gonna throw it in. Stop. <laughs> Squeeze the hell out of this bottle. Throw some down on the foil. Snap the bubbles. Oops. Trippy. Trippy. Just show you how it goes and you know, hot juice dripping on me. There you go. This is what you want it to do. You want it spitting and sputtering and plumes of vapor coming out. This is just 3.5, I think. Uh, so I will back off a little and uh, show you how it vapes. So I'm just going to fire this up a little. I think I might pump up the volume on it just a little bit too. What for? That. That looks good. <laughs> well, we'll give it a little bit of a vape. Oops. Ooh. <coughs> Never be breathing in as you're approaching the drip tip with your finger on the fire. is good <laughs> and I'm really uh, surprised I did it and it, it took a little bit of preparation uh, as you can see but with uh, bits of information from different people um, and sometimes you don't find everything you want to know from one video or one person but those four guys talking about rebuildables, three or four things, and it just clicked. It's the top wire is tighter than the middle wires because I'm pulling it in the post, and you know, it the, the actual wick might be hitting the thing, and and it just all sort of came together. that's not bad um, however <laughs> I still rather the silica wick taste um, this thing you have to get used to doing a little tippy thing you know people say well I always vape like this no, really I don't believe you <laughs> I don't believe you want to I believe you have to because I don't see regular people just doing this. It's just not happening. Um, so I can't get used to the whole tippy thing because mesh doesn't actually wick. The, the, the definition of wick does not really apply. So if you're not paying attention and you're not doing the tippy thing, um, or if you do the tippy thing too much, you end up getting juice in the drip, drip tip. If you don't pay attention and you don't do the drippy, the tippy thing enough, um, then you get a dry hit. And believe me, a dry hit on one of these is way harsher than a dry hit on a regular atomizer. Um, but the moral of the story is don't give up. I had given up. I had uh, actually I packed this up and two other 
uh, Genesis style atomizers to go to Jake. It's still good. They're still going to Jake because they still prefer the silica ones. But I can't say it now. It's because I'm not doing it right or I'm not having any success in building them. I have success. Uh, this is just my method. And like I said, it's, it's taken from four different people given advice. So watch ten videos and take something out of each of them and you will eventually have success. It is a little bit of tinkering to find out what works best for you. Because some guy could tell you, oh, do it this way, but they don't have your hands. They don't have your eyes. <laughs> you know? So, um, but the moral, act, like I said, of the story is don't give up. It is doable. It might not be doable the way you saw it in one video, but don't give up on one video. Watch 10 different guys doing it, and eventually a culmination of that has come to this success. And this is one of the rarest times that when I first fired an, a rebuildable, it didn't snap and short out. Yeah, don't give up. Sumi Gun Set Award! Come on.